Hi, I'm Jane Wells with CEOs You Should Know, and you are? Steve Van Dorn from Vans. And what is Vans, for the, for the one person who doesn't know? <laughs> well, Vans is a company that my father started in 1966. Vans is kind of a free spirit. This year, our, our fiscal year is going to be coming out and stuff, but uh, we're well up in the three billion dollar area and stuff. Three uh, billion. Three billion, getting closer to four billion probably. What's your exact title? Um, if you see you CEO, it would be chief, you know, entertainment <laughs> officer, because I'm in charge of uh, the brand building. I'm in charge of, uh, you know, going around the world and making sure that. Uh, um, surfing events, skateboard events. Uh, I have a daughter that works for me. She's in charge of North America. We work with great teams on Europe and Asia that do our events, if it's the House of Vans Entertainment uh, venues, to uh, the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing in the North Shore of Hawaii, to the Vans 25th anniversary of the Vans Warped Tour music event uh, that uh, Kevin Lyman and myself have been doing for many years, to BMX events, and I'm um, just finishing up on one. Uh, it's called the uh, uh, Vans Custom Culture. 3,000 high schools, we send art shoes so them to paint on. Four different shoes, a high top, a low top, um, uh, slip on, an old school. I'm just a big kid. Your dad dropped out of middle school, right? He didn't even go to high school. One year. He was like 16 and he was out. How does that guy end up running a, an enterprise of this magnitude? You know, it's uh, an amazing story. And uh, he was very, very uh, passionate when he started something, and he always finished it and stuff. Uh, he started off just sweeping floors, and from there worked his way up to be executive vice president of one of the third biggest shoe manufacturer company of vulcanized shoes in the United States in the 50s and 60s. Came to California to straighten out their factories, losing a million dollars a month. And after about a year straightening that out. In the 60s? Out, the 60s. Wow. It's a 64. And he left there in 65, decided that he had an idea of building his own factory, which only three had been built in 19, since 1900. His idea was to make a great quality product at a good value because it was made directly from the factory to the, his stores, and then customers, superior customer service. He made the sole twice as thick and used pure crepe rubber, which eventually skaters said that wears longer than everything else. He used why, why did he do that? He knew because he, he knew who the competitions were and how their shoes would wear. And he made, he used number 10 duck, which is a lot stronger canvas than anybody else. Use reinforced stitching. Tell me the story about the first 12 customers. Yep, so dad, uh, him, Jimmy, and Gordy were in the factory, you know, building for a whole year. And then they kind of said, Paul, why don't you do the retail? My dad had never been in retail before. He says, okay. First 12 customers came in. And so they got the shoes. The first customer comes up and they give a $5 bill. My dad, had, was, he's like he says, I'm smart enough to have a cash register. I've hit the button and there's no money in there. <laughs> so the first 12 people they gave the shoes to and asked them to come back and pay for them. And my because dad, he didn't have change. He didn't have no so change. So they, they all, did they all they come all back the next? 11 of them came back the next day. One of them came back two weeks later because she was visiting her daughter. She lived in Lakewood and she wasn't going to come back there for two weeks. But my dad has good faith in people and he knew that she, she brought the money back. So that's how we started off the first day. How old were you when you started working in the company? <coughs> Ten. I would pass flyers out at the swap meet because we had no stores except for the factory. And then eventually we'd get a store. And my dad would get a manager, a second store, third store, fourth store. On the fifth store, he didn't have a manager to put in there on Saturday and Sunday, so we put me in. That time I was 11. Was he targeting skaters, or how did skaters find vans? They, they adopted us in the mid-70s. They gave our company purpose. They gave our company reason to be. Surfers went from the surf in the afternoon to skateboarding. They wore our shoes because it wore better, it gripped better, and the waffle sole is something that grips the sole better, grips the grip tape, and it wears longer and stuff. And that's kind of how we started off in meeting the skaters. Tell me about fa Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, that's a fun, that was a fun time. Sean Penn, I learned this from Betty Mitchell, who was our PR lady, and she's passed about two or three years ago. She was 92. And so she straightened me out, and I thought that Betty just went to Universal Sony Pictures and brought them in. No, Sean went into the store in Santa Monica and bought a pair. Went to the studios and they noticed that. So then they called Vans up. Betty then brought two dozen pair of shoes that day up to the studio. The rest, it's just, just luck that, you know, Spicoli himself, the surfer dude, skateboarded. And it, 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 you know, the movie itself came out. There was an album um, that came out uh, from Jackson Brown, but you can see, you know, from the album cover that, you know, you're front and center. I know. Boom. And so from that point on, international started to grow. National sales started to grow. It was the first time that Vans was recognized outside of Southern California. This company's been through a lot over the yes. last uh, half, 
half century. I mean, yeah. you've, you've had private, equ you know, private equity going public, uh, bankruptcy, uh, all this kind of stuff. What was yeah. that like for the family to have economic turmoil with a company that you'd built? I learned about integrity. And he says, we owe that money. We're going to pay it back. I'm just oh, I want three years. So three and a half years and stuck to his plan, came out of Chapter 11, not owing, owing a penny. He paid everybody paid back? Paid everybody back 100 cents on the dollar. He wanted to pay the last $50,000 to Security Pacific in those days in pennies in a dump truck, but he <laughs> heard they could refuse it because they were just, you know, they wanted to liquidate us every six weeks when my dad had to go into the bank, I'm sorry, the uh, um, court and present the project, you know, uh, what he's doing Gee, and stuff. Where is Security Pacific now? I know, exactly. Where's exactly. Vans? I took my 88-year-old dad, who's turning 89 in a month, with me on the last trip. And to see his face, to see people come up and get his autograph, I said, we're bringing the horse right here, you know. This is the guy that started it, you know. I was by his side and I've been going, doing this for 53 years, but he's the one that had the guts and the, in, you know, intuition to go for it, roll the dice. I've worked with my brothers and sisters and my dad every day for the first, you know, 20 years. And, you know, it was just like, you know, family. My mother was a first store manager in Costa Mesa, where our first store was. But we always got along. I, you know. What's the <coughs> secret? I think love what you like. You know, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be my dad. I wanted to do what he did. Steve Van Dorn, thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Pleasure.